G'day guys, how's it going? My name is Sean and in today's video I'm going to be giving you a guide on how I edit my videos for YouTube uh, using my NAS from Synology and how that workflow uh, works for me. So let's begin. So first of all you can see on the screen here we've already set up um, I've already set up a few things to show you that I've got a project here with some video files and some audio. I've got my task manager here so you can sort of see the performance you can expect. And I've got here on the right hand side uh, all of my YouTube uh, videos that I've created or projects that I'm working on at the moment. So with a NAS, the first thing you'll need to do is log in and set up a folder for where all of your footage is going to end up. So this is all of your video files, all of your images, all of your project files, because you don't want to have to be copying your video and project files from the NAS back to the hard drive and back again all the time, because we know that with programs like Premiere, when you launch a project or save a project, it's really um, specific about where those files are in order to locate them uh, if you close the program and reopen it again. So I'm going to log into my NAS here. Just give me one moment. And I'm going to show you how I've created my folder structure um, for all of my video projects that I do. So in this little application here from FileStation, and just um, before I start by the way, the NAS that I'm using is from Synology. It's a DS416J uh, with two 4 terabyte hard drives inside. Um, as far as the connection that I'm using, the NAS is connected by a Ethernet cable, a CAT6 Ethernet cable to a gigabit switch. Uh, which is under the desk that I'm uh, sitting at right now and that switch is then uh, connected back to my PC using a Ethernet cable as well but the performance you can get uh, if you were to go wireless editing from a laptop for me anyway um, I'm getting around about um, 700 to 800 megabit throughput so about 70 or 80 megabytes read and write over Wi-Fi it's roughly about uh, 30 or 40 depending on the distance you are from your uh, wireless access point. So just wanted to quickly cover that before I begin. Um, in the file station now, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can see here we've already created a bunch of different folders here for, for different reasons, different projects. Um, we have media, we have work, we have personal. It's kind of all divided up. Uh, but for myself, I've got my folder here which is called Sean NAS. And then inside of here, I've got again a folder called YouTube. And I've got here all of my video files. So I've gone ahead and created a folder uh, for each project. Uh, so that way everything is um, split up and kept separate. So that way there's no um, problem with Premiere locating the files because sometimes files can have the same name. Um, for example, you might take a video and that video might be called number one.mov, but then if you take another video, maybe a month later, and you format your SD card, that video is also called number one MOV, and the computer will get confused and try to overwrite one or the other. So if you keep everything split up and keep it separate, it makes everything a little bit easier. So the, fo uh, the folder that I'm currently uh, working on right now is Mac OS to NAS, which is on how to do a backup from your Mac to a NAS with Time Machine. And so these folders here are also accessible in Windows uh, through the File Explorer. So if I do the same thing and go into my backup folder, into the Sean NAS folder, into the YouTube folder, I've got all the same uh, project files here side by side. So it does require some discipline to get into the habit of being able to constantly just import uh, all of your video files from your SD card or JPEGs into those folders. But you can just think of it as if instead of importing to my C drive or importing to my external hard drive, all I'm doing is choosing to import it to my network drive. So it's just changing your um, your you know your mind about uh, where where you're saving files and and how that all works. If you can get into the habit and get into the discipline of saving it to the network, you'll find that it becomes a habit not too long after that. So now that we've got our folders set up and we've got our video and photos uh, in those folders, for example, I'm going to go into one of the old projects, uh, What is a NAS? And we can see here we've got the project file from Premiere. We've got here the final output because that video is already live on YouTube. 
I've got my images, I've got audio from my microphone, I've got video content, so that's all divvied up into separate folders and then Adobe creates these ones here uh, when you're actually working in the project file. Now, one of the other cool benefits of doing everything in something like Adobe Premiere is right now I'm editing on a PC. I also have a, an iMac and a laptop, uh, a MacBook Pro that I work on sometimes, and I can open up these project files over the network um, at the same time, and I can continue editing on a different platform if I choose to. So that's just um, an added benefit using Adobe, Adobe Premiere versus something like Final Cut. Now, if I was to go ahead and jump into Adobe Premiere, and I can see here that I've got some footage already loaded in with some audio loaded in as well. This footage was shot in uh, 4K native resolution on a Sony A7S II. And if I go ahead, I'm just gonna minimize that, and scrub through this footage, we can see down where we've got the uh, network um, percentage lighting up. We can see that when we're editing our video, that it's all happening over the network at the moment it's nothing at all on the uh, hard drive so we can see the column called disk next to it is not doing anything at all so all of the workload all of the pressure is on the NAS and I can scrub through and you can see in the preview window up in the corner here that it doesn't have any problems at all buffering through and loading 4k footage over a network um, these are mechanical hard drives, two four terabyte hard drives, and all of my all my computer is doing is purely just rendering it and giving me the video preview. So, again, another thing that you might want to consider is that with uh, 4K video becoming the standard, um, you know your phones can shoot 4K, cameras are um, more and more often coming out on the market with the option to record and shoot in 4K. The video sizes for you know a 10 minute video can easily exceed 10 gigabytes you know in a matter of uh, in a matter of a few minutes so if you've got a laptop or a computer with only a very very small hard drive like a 128 or a 256 gigabyte um, drive then you can find that you know after a few videos you've filled up all of that space and you've got to start moving your video files off onto external hard drives um, and personally myself my C drive I can show you here for my computer I believe is only a 128 gigabyte drive so I've already got here uh, 111 gig total capacity because this is purely just my boot drive and where my applications live um, this media folder is just my games library and my movie library that I have um, so I that drive never gets used really for anything work related but my my NAS which has um, four terabytes of capacity I've used a lot of it with a lot of uh, videos and movies um, but I can expand this as well if I want to I can add more hard drives if I wish if I wish to um, so just wanted to talk a bit about what my workflow is and how I edit video. Um, wanted to, I guess, debunk some of the myths about um, editing from a network drive because the other thing that's great about this is um, my video files that are on the NAS or my projects that are on the NAS, if I'm not at home and I'm somewhere else where there's an internet connection, I could launch those projects if I really had to and I could work on those projects over the internet even. Now obviously it's not ideal because your internet connection is going to be much slower, much much slower than if you're physically connected, but at least I still have the option. I don't have to worry about carrying around an external hard drive or worrying about if that external hard drive doesn't get ejected properly, am I going to lose all of my files? All of my data is safe, it's on a NAS, it's got multiple hard drives backing it up and I can also access it remotely, I can use it like a giant Dropbox and I can share my video files or share my project files with for people who are working on that project with me, so it just gives you a lot more versatility when it comes to video editing. So thank you for watching this video, I hope uh, this video helps you decide when you decide to purchase an external hard drive for maybe something like video editing or photo editing. Maybe thinking about, geez, if I've got you know two or three or four hard drives and I'm filling them all up, maybe should I be better off moving over onto 
a, a NAS, um, if you're a professional or a semi-professional or you're someone who is, this is their hobby or your passion and you've just got a lot, a lot of stuff that you don't want to delete um, and you're worried about losing, then I would highly recommend a NAS. Um, as like I said, you can scrub through 4K footage um, connected with a simple Ethernet cable from the NAS to your PC or your Mac. Um, and you don't really have any loss of quality in the uh, in the playback here. You can see, you know, I'm playing back. That's 4K footage over a network, no problem. And I'm barely even touching the, you know, the maximum throughput of the NAS. So uh, leave me a comment, a question. I'd love to hear any questions that you might have. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, or if you want me to elaborate even further. Um, please visit my website as I'll be leaving a bit of a, um, a tidbit, a bit of a guide over there as well. And subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.